Hey everyone, it's John Carella, one of the co-creators and executive producer of Dance Moms. Hello everyone, happy summer. Well, the Olympics are here. I feel as though I wish I had some Olympic music to go behind the intro rather than Vogue music um, <laughs> or house music. But this is a time when we turn on the television and we see people do some amazing things with their bodies, similar to dancers. So this next guest is just one of few, you know, I think I heard once that the amount of people in the world that have a gold medal is maybe just even less than an Oscar or something similar to that. So this person has three gold medals two silver and a bronze and many world championship titles. She is an unbelievable dancer. And that's what pulled me into her gymnastics years ago, as well as being extremely powerful and as well as being a friend. So this guest, I have Daniela Silivas on. She's an Olympic champion, like I said, and, um, her gymnastics is pure art at times. And we talk about that. We talk about what it was like growing up in Romania and training. We talk about just exactly how she got those legs and feet. So um, sit back and just get ready for the Olympics. You're going to see a lot of gymnastics and you're going to see a lot of people doing the syllabus on the floor and beam. Here we have Daniela syllabus. Okay, we have um, our first Olympic, Olympian, Olympic champion, gymnast, friend, someone I love very dearly, who's super fun, by the way, everyone. Like, besides her gymnastics being amazing, she's very fun. Um, if you ever, you know, see her out or something, make sure you say hi. Um, but Olympic champion, Daniela Silivas. Hi, Daniela. Hi, John. <laughs> Look what I, wait. Well, first I have my American flag since this is the oh. Olympic podcast. And then, oh. do you remember oh. this? <laughs> <laughs> I can't put it over my hat, but do you remember? You gave this to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Romanian uh, medal. Very sweet of you. So what was this from? At one of the like nationals medal that when you go to nationals and internationals and all that, that's the, those are the medals or used to be the medals. That's, this is, I mean, I love how, but that's very you, you know, like, oh, you know, one of those national medals, you probably have, you know, hundreds of them, just like you have. And, and my, and I don't know, I, maybe it's not like, I don't keep up with my, I don't know, my trophies and medals. And I think memories are more important than those, but, um, you know. I love that. I, I actually, do you, um, well, tell me what's one of your favorite memories in gymnastics then, since you said that. I know you're, we all know your Olympic medals, but what's one of your favorite memories? Um, as a gymnast, I feel like I always look back at um, the world championships in 1987 when we won as a team. So I think it was the first time and the only time uh, during my gymnastics when we won with a team and that was very special. Did you, were you, did you all know you were like, did you walk in knowing like we're going to win or were you surprised? We did have a good year. The few months before we went to Europeans and we had a good competition. So when we were doing the um, podium training and all that, a lot of the judges and people around us said that we have a strong team and we can win. So, and we did. And that, I think that was like, you know, being together as a team, you know, it's always nice to win medals, but competing together as a team and uh, winning as a team, I think it's very special. Because you lived and trained with these girls, correct? Oh, yes, yes. They are my sisters. We lived together. We did everything. We trained. We, we 
yeah, the seven years of my life, eight years of my life, I we live together. So uh, they're not just uh, teammates; they're friends and they're my sisters. Do you still talk to them from time to time or see them? Yeah. We don't see each other that much, but we definitely talk and we keep in touch and make sure that everybody's good. And uh, when we see each other, we just try to remember all the good memories and just laugh at all the crazy stuff that we did. Yeah, I would I would have loved to see your um, what, what you all were doing after you won in the hotel room in 87. Oh, I don't think. I think we were too tired, but just, you know, <laughs> that happiness of knowing that together we we did something great. So, because um, we won with the team, but then the next day we had competition. So, you know, it's the team competition and then all around and then event final. So you still have to do a lot more of competitions, not just uh, the team competition. So um, you kind of have to be happy and uh, enjoy that moment, but then go back to being ready to compete and focus on the next days. You had to rest. No cake. Couldn't have any cake that time. Okay, I'm eating cake for all those You're days. catching up? You're no. catching up with your cake? <laughs> yes, I do every time I go home. <laughs> I know. I see those. Oh, Well, I like to buy them just in case I want them. I don't need the whole thing, believe me, but I like to just go and buy stuff because it's so good. Now, do you feel because you weren't focused on medals that that's why your gymnastics got so good? Uh, not really. I think it's all in the training, the way we train, the way we practice, the hours that we put in. And I think that's what, like we weren't, we didn't learn to just look at the medals and to look at winning. You know, the coaches did. The coaches uh, did go to a competition because during my gymnastics, it was a communist era and they were expected us to win. So we went into a competition. We expected to win whatever, two golds and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's how the coaches had that pressure on this is what's expected from the Romanian team. And I'm pretty sure the uh, Russian team and China, all of them were having the same thing. But we really didn't have time to look at the scores and trying to figure out, you know, who got what. And especially in that time that it wasn't like on your phone, you can figure out all the scores. Mm. And, um we didn't have that. So we just had to wait until the end of the competition to really know what's going on and who won and what place we got. Well, 87 is when I fell in love. And I stand by this and you'll see it in a comment everywhere. The 87 world Romanian team. Iconic legends. I feel it is the best team, in my opinion, because of the dancing the artistry, the, your legs and feet, um, Aurelia's legs and feet, just, it was so beautiful. It was, I think that's what drew me into it. Training and dance. I looked at you all mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, they're dancers, flexible. And then they do this insane flip. And, and I think, and thank you. Cause that was the, you know, hearing from everybody else that, 87 team was the best team. That's how we felt. But I feel like it's it wasn't just one person and then everybody in the team. I think everybody in the team had the same talent, the same routines, in the same, um, I don't know, great gymnastics. It wasn't just Yeah, one. the depth like, of the team. The, it was you the know, the first girl up was great. It was like amazing. And very... Few teams have that. They always have like one or two gymnasts that they are like the stars, and then is the rest of the team that kind of you put together. But I feel like in '87 we were just all of us. We we had a, amazing gymnasts on that team. What did it feel like? Speaking of amazing, I think what was there on floor wasn't there three tens back to back? Yes. Yeah. What did that feel like? <laughs> well, it was like you know, like 
I feel like in that time, tents were coming easier than later, you know, mm -hmm. but still it's like you, if you did an amazing routine, you got a tent. So to do three, three in a row, uh, I think it was at that time, that point that we're like, we had a chance to win. Um, it was the third event. So we were ready to, um, show off and, uh, Even even with the vault, we uh, seeing you know after floor, we just like that's it, we can win and the title is ours. Yeah, no, and I'd love if you all those of you who are listening, um, YouTube it, and you can hear the audience kind of oh going it was insane. The audience. It was they the were like insane audience. over each ten, like oh my, you know, like another one another one here's another one and yeah. it was well deserved between um all three what well, was you and aurelia and then camelia voigne correct yes, yes. yeah oh, and her daughter gymnastics what you know your gymnastics well i you know what i made my mom buy you know all of you who are younger might not understand this but my mom had to like buy the d the vhs from the back of international gymnastics for oh, me to wow. see it because uh -huh. I didn't. So I got the, it must've been some random person that they sent with the camcorder in the stands shooting you all. So I, it's not the footage from the, uh -huh. um, you know, NBC yeah. or CBS. It's all the footage from just like a home it's video. So I think sometimes those are like the best. You yeah. Just, it, and one, that's, just one thing. And you know, You know, I did want to bring you on. I think it was one of. Well, I wanted to bring you on Dance Moms, and then on the spinoff, and no, they just you. wouldn't let me. They yeah. wouldn't let me do it, but it's because of, like I said before, everyone. It's because of. It's because of your dancing. So, who taught you how to dance, and do, how much training did you do in dance when you were training? Well, well, we always started, and I feel like this is why you see a big difference between um, Romanian, Chinese, Russian gymnast, and American gymnast. Um, the difference is that when in Romania, especially when we, when we started gymnastics, we started with just dense flexibility and strength. So for the first year or two of your gymnastic life, that's all you do. You do, you do ballet every day. So we started from eight to nine in the morning. It was ballet day, you know, like every one hour of ballet every day. Um, and then in the afternoon practices, we did half an hour of, you know, turns, jumps, uh, flexibility. So it's really important at the beginning when kids start gymnastics to focus on the flexibility, on the strength, on the dance, on the basics. Eventually, This will help uh, when you get older and you're learning new skills. Uh, but here, the focus is on going to competition and winning medals. doesn't matter if you're a five-year-old and you go to competition and you win medals. Uh, that's more important here. And that's when you don't have the time. When you focus on competition at age five, six, seven, you don't have the time to put in for the flexibility and the strength and the basics. So that's the difference between the training in Romania, especially in our time to training here. So you would, so at five, you started doing this dance every day for an hour ballet, yes, and it was did. ballet. It wasn't right. jazz. It was, it was bar ballet and, you know, a lot of flexibility and strength. That's their focus when you start gymnastics for the first year or two of your gymnastic life. And when you say every day, do you mean Monday through Friday? No, I mean Monday through Sunday. <laughs> I love how you <laughs> said that. <laughs> wow. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, that does make sense that you... um About your legs and feet. I'm sure you got your feet from, might be hereditary too, from your mom and dad. I don't think so. I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't. It's a lot of work. If you um, go back and look at some of my gymnastic, my footage, you know, like 
my videos of like when I was, I'll say 12, 13, 14, you know, like look at my handstand split and all that. And then to the time, like 87, when I was like 15, 16, 17, yeah. and you will see a big difference. I'm like, when I was 12, my split wasn't 180. I was like this, you know, but overall, I think continuing that pattern of doing ballet every day, doing dance, doing flexibility, that showed later in my gymnastic life. Yeah, I think you're right. And I tell this to some of the dance moms, you know, similar to what you're saying, they wanted to be good at seven. And I'm looking going, you know, they're going to be good. Like they're going to dance good. I can tell. Danielle is laughing because I was able to put the medal on that she gave me because I, because <laughs> we technically just fell off the beam a couple times in this podcast. Yeah. But you know what? We got back up. We're back yeah, on. We fell to the right and then to the <laughs> left and then, you know. And, and now we're here. I'm doing my, you know, what would be my move? A front aerial. That I oh, want to do love, that. That's, on my, the beam. that's my favorite move of all. Beautiful. Like the skill of front gorgeous. aerial is just like that was the skill for me that I love doing it and I think I was good at it. So and it was you, easy. Yes, you were. You were very good at it. <laughs> so that's another thing I want to ask you is did you enjoy taking dance class? Did you well, let me rephrase this? No. You that did. <laughs> bar ballet, plie, plie, plie. Did you enjoy dancing? in your compulsory routines and on the floor the compulsory we hated it but Did i feel you? like i feel like because it was like every day the same thing for four years it was just mm. and, and and we did train every day compulsory and uh and that means not monday to friday it's monday through sunday Yes. So that's every day. I love that. Um, that needs to be a shirt. Every day is Monday through Sunday, not Monday through Friday. Yes. Um, so it was it was that boring move that you you know you have to do it, but you don't want to. You know, but that's that's what makes people great instead of just good when you do things that you don't want to do it and it's not fun, but you know, you have to do it and you do it. But Daniela, that floor, you're 87 compulsory oh. and you're, hold on, you're 88 oh, really? compulsory. Ah. It is pure art. Did you, so that's what I, did you enjoy doing it in front of a crowd? Cause it looked as though you enjoyed it. Um, I think I did enjoy performing. That didn't look like that in practice every time, I'm pretty sure. But when it was time to show off and it was time to do it in front of judges, we knew how to bring that um, to the floor. So, but I, I feel like it's, that's not just, that's part of learning how to compete. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, part of training the right way, the way you want to compete. So we learned that in the gym and having that, I guess the great coaches and choreographer that help us bring the best in the competition. Who uh, coached you on floor? Um, it was Octavian Bello, which is the floor coach. And we had the beam coach, Maria Cosma, who was an is was an amazing coach, uh, beam coach and choreographer and helped with everything. So um, Did she choreograph your 87 and 88? Yes. And um, is she, was she there in 88? Would I see her yeah. in the backdrop? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You had the she short there, dark hair. She was there. And then the uh, head coach, Adrian Goriak, who's a great friend of mine now, and we're trying to see each other every time I go to Romania or to France, but he was the head coach. So 
going to a competition, you only had, uh, you only can bring two coaches on the floor. And it wasn't like, oh, let me change uh, credential and somebody else can go in and out. It wasn't like that. So you only had two coaches. So usually the fe- it's a female coach and a male coach. So usually the head coach and the beam coach um, were in the big competition, huge like Europeans and world championships. So you don't see uh, the bars coach who's, again, amazing coach that moved to um, – England and really helped oh, I didn't know that. gymnastics in the last 30 years. I did not know he's, that. He's the main coach that helped English gymnastics to get to where they are now. So, you know, he probably helped Beth Tweedle and Oh, yes, yes. Um, he, he was the technical director for um, the International Gymnastic Federation, but he was an amazing coach. He retired, but uh, he was our bars coach. And um, But you don't see him in competitions because they couldn't travel and they couldn't be in the gym. And then, of course, Octavian Bellu, who was the floor coach at that time, and the same thing during my time, you didn't see him on the floor coaching because they weren't allowed to be more than two coaches on the floor. I never knew that he was your floor coach. I thought it, tell me the other guy's name that I saw on TV. Uh, Adrian Gorak. I thought he was he, your floor coach. He was the head coach. So he usually stayed on vault and um, Adrian Stan was on bars and then Maria was on beam and Bellu was on floor. So that's what we had. We always had four coaches. So you have to tell the story of, I mean, everyone does it now, the syllabus, but I love if you feel, if you want to tell the story, how you threw the syllabus at the Olympics. Well, I trained the syllabus. I I trained that double, double, you know, and I competed a few times. Um, And it was Octavian Bellu who helped me and he was the floor coach. So when I went into the Olympics, he didn't travel to the Olympics with us. So it was the head coach, Adrian Gorak, who was like, I never spotted you on that. You go for it. (laughs) And the equipment in Seoul, they were horrible. Like, Everybody complained. There was the floor was so hard we could barely tumble on it. It was just their equipment, and we weren't used to it, and we didn't like it at all. So, I guess you know, I got up on the podium training, and I had to through one. You know, I had to run from outside the floor, trying to run a little bit more uh, to do one, and that's all I did. I trained one uh, double double before the competition and I did one in competition, not so great, but. But now you see it everywhere. Now I see it and I'm jealous of those, that spring floor when they (laughs) just take two steps and no problem doing the skill. Yeah, no, because it's different now. That was like 35 years ago. But the boldness, how you just threw it, you know, and. I, I love that story because you're just, you know, because all of us watching think it's this, you know, contrived, strategic, you know, we all. <laughs> it's That's like, nice go do it. Everybody thinks that way. It was like, please, please, please let me land on my feet. <laughs> just like your favorite event, Vault, huh? Oh, my goodness. Don't talk about Vault. <laughs> And I nightmare. love that, everyone. She's a Olympic medalist on vault. And so this is really good to know because you were – vaulting is scary. And vaulting is scary, especially on that skinny horse that we had to vault and no safety mats, nothing. Just go for it. And you I, got a bronze medal for it. I think they felt sorry for me. Everybody fell. That's why. it wasn't. It wasn't like – Wow, she was amazing and she got a medal. It was like, okay, the first gymnast fell. The second gymnast fell. Oh, she stayed on her feet and she got <laughs> a medal. <laughs> no, no. That's how, that's how you think of it. Um, so, you know, you're not into medals, but I'll say them. She has three golds, <laughs> two silver, one bronze, and... I feel like I messaged you once. I was watching, it was a antique road show. And someone brought in a Seoul Olympic gold medal to oh, No, I didn't know. Yeah, to like um appraise it. Oh. 
Don't okay. lose those medals. That's all I'm saying. Because I was laugh. I was only thinking of you because I thought it was so random that it was this. First of all, it's an Olympic gold medal, but it was from Seoul, and ah. someone. I don't know how they found it or had it, but they did it for an appraisal. So where are your medals? Uh, some of them are in Romania, and some of them are here somewhere. I love. I that. don't. I. I'm sorry. I should. I should put them in a case and just. Uh, I don't know, do all the stuff and I don't. Look at, you can do a little, little backdrop like me. Yeah, my, something my I don't. I don't have any gymnastic pictures, like framed. I, mm. I think I have one in the house that it's framed gymnastic picture and that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I feel like gymnastic was my life and it was that life, you know, but yeah, but not anymore. So I try to focus on family and kids and friends, and that's that's the main, you know, life now. So, but because of your accomplishments, do you get called more now during an Olympic year to do interviews and things like that? No, I am, I don't, and I think it's more because I don't stay in the social media. So if you're not out there and you don't put yourself out there, mm -hmm. they don't. Um, when I go home, like I went in April home and of course they were asking me to do an interview for the Olympics and, you know, kind of like before the Olympics and all that. And it was fun. Uh, it's not, I, I, I don't enjoy those. I just don't, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I'm a very private person and, uh, yeah. I like it that way. I don't like, I don't feel comfortable talking about my accomplishments. Yes, they were my accomplishments, but I feel like they're mine and I didn't do them to get that recognition. So mm. I don't feel really comfortable. You know, people are like, Oh, she won a gold medal. And I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, you know, kind of like. Well, and I feel people only do that because even in this antique roadshow, they were saying the percentage of the population, it's more about the data of who has this thing. You know, it's not like you can go and buy it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We grew up just, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, at that time, they were not like, you know, TikTok, Facebook, all that social media. So it wasn't big deal. Yes, we won. But then after winning, guess what? I went back in the gym and we did the same thing over. It didn't matter that I won. The next day, I was back in the gym training like everybody else. So... um Were you ever allowed to kind of feel your accomplishments? Like you know, party, rejoice, feel proud? Well, I think feeling proud, yes, but it was never, let's have a party because you won a medal. Mm -hmm. You know, after the Olympics, we were in Seoul for another week. And guess what we did? We went back in the gym. So let's so we don't talk about your accomplishments because I don't want to. <laughs> so I don't want to make you uncomfortable. We already did. What made you fall in love with gymnastics? I don't think it was something that made me fall in love with gymnastics. I was just a five-year-old that had an uh, energy, and I was doing cartwheels outside, everywhere. It was at the time where all the kids were playing you know, outside on the streets and I was just doing cartwheels and, uh, in kindergarten, I was doing cartwheels and bridges and everything. So that's how I ended up starting gymnastics because the kindergarten teacher was like, I know she's a gymnast, but she needs to stop doing gymnastics. And then my mom was like, she's not a gymnast. She never done gymnastics. So it's like, Oh, I have a friend that is a coach. You should take her. So that's how I started for a few months. And then um, Bella and Marta moved to my hometown to open the training center. And they were looking for a little gymnast, um, five, six-year-olds to start a program. And I did a few months gymnastics with them. And then I started first grade. So it, it's hard to 
I don't know. It's like, oh, I saw Nadia on TV and I fell in love. I'm like, I, as a five-year-old, even if I saw Nadia on TV, she's my idol and she was my idol growing up in the gym. But when I started gymnastics, it wasn't like, oh, I saw gymnastics and I fell in love. It was just something that I was good at. It was fun. And I had energy and I got in the gym and I I enjoyed it and I loved it and I wanted to stay and do gymnastics. So that's how I ended up doing gymnastics. And I think, you know, you start to see results. You you love it and you work hard and you start to see results and you start to see that working and having a goal that you work towards and you you accomplish that, I think it's just that that joy and that satisfaction that keeps you in the gym, especially when it's hard. Did gymnastics come easy for you or did you have to work really hard? I think I was that gymnast that had that extra talent and I learned skills really easy Mm. and I wasn't a kid that was afraid. So I think I, I had that perfect combination of working and talent that yeah. helped me become, because you cannot do anything. It doesn't matter how much hard, uh, how hard you work and how much you want it. If you don't have that talent, it's very hard to get to be the best. But again, you have that talent and you're not working, then you cannot accomplish and not be the best because it has to have a combination and of both. And I think I did. It was a gift for you. The gift. Yes. You know, we all yes, have our it gift. Is, it is. It is. Yeah. I had that, you know. Um, you don't see that many five year olds doing bridges and cartwheels without any kind of classes. Very few are doing it. So I was one of them that I was born to be a gymnast, I guess. And uh, so did you train at times with Nadia in the gym when you were little? Um, yes, I did. Uh, right before I started, uh, first grade, I trained with Nadia and after that we trained in the same gym, but not at the same time. So we'll like Mm. see them, um, the compound where the school is and cafeteria, dormitories, everything that's for gymnastics. I think gymnastic and track and field, it's a sports school. So Mm. you have everything over there. So of course, as little kids, we're like seeing Nadia and her team outside in the, you know, in the area where they were playing and just walking around. So uh, it was fun for us to be like, oh, there's Nadia, you know. So she was already, she had already done the Olympics. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 78, uh, it moved to my hometown and, uh, that was fun for us kids to see them training and, you know, aspire to be just like them. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah talk about being inspired, you know, exactly, right in the same exactly. room as you. It's and like being that now we're friends, you know, like when you're little, you're like, you're looking, it's like, wow. And then it reminds me of that picture of you and Nadia. Yes. <laughs> when I was little, I was sick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll say it just because she, you don't have to comment. It's another accolade, but she does have a statue in Romania in Deva, if I'm correct. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Which is incredible. But all I'm just. Her statues. You, I all feel of like you? statues you get when you die, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's called, um, gymnastic legend street or something it's right Mm. by the gymnastic the gym and um they put statues of some coaches and about 10 olympic gymnasts so if you ever go to deva anybody yeah go go say hi to me and and tag her in it (laughs) just you know (laughs) hello daniela (laughs) pat my head does it look like you no (laughs) I look like a man. I'm like, (laughs) no, it doesn't look like me. I don't think it looks like me. Do you miss performing? Do you miss competing? The Mm -hmm. the feeling? Mm -hmm. No. No. So you did say, you know, that you enjoyed, uh, you know, showing off for the judges and for, you were trained how to get into the mode yeah. How, how would you get yourself in that position, you know, 
let's just say I'm putting you there. I'm trying to take you back. It's it's 1988. You're getting ready for the the team beam, which was incredible. Oh, yeah, and I was shaking like crazy. You might not you see it. it. I, I was like, I was on the beam like this, shaking. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. You still got a ten. You, you're nervous. You just have to learn how to, you know, control that, but. How he did you control it? Because that's kind of been a theme. I think it's nerd. not about con- I don't think it was about controlling for us then just to kind of like realize that we can do it. Um, mm. And I take it back to training, the way that we train, the way that we spend all those hours in the gym uh, back at home. I think that's what helped us do the best in competition and not make, make mistakes. Um Example, not every day, but we used to train beam. We had 45 minutes on beam and assignment was to do 10 perfect routines. And by perfect doesn't mean staying on the beam, by means no wobbles, no steps at the landing. Mm. So when you train like that and that's expected, this is the, that's why how you, every routine is supposed to be a perfect routine. When you go to competition, Yes, you're nervous because it's a competition. It's a big competition and you want to do well and you want to do well for your country, for your team. Um, But somehow you remember that you know how to do it, that you've done it at home, thousands of routines that they're perfect. And I think your body just goes into that mode of this is what I know how to do and this is what I'm going to do. So, I love that you said um, that they tell you you can, you know, you can do it. So you kind of relied it on your confidence, like yes, I've done this exactly, and over I think and that's over what again. It is. I can it's do like it again. You, um, there is a video, and I was surprised of that too because I don't remember. But there was a video of, I think eighty seven or eighty eight. I think eighty seven. Uh, podium training, and we were on beam the whole a Romanian team on beam. And it wasn't a competition. Yes, it was podium training. But when you see us on the beam, we look like we were competing, like no wobbles, no falls. It was the same that you see the competition routines. And I think that's how we train to just like do those perfect routines over and over and over and over and not make mistakes. And we learned that to do it over the years because that's how we trained. So when we went to competition, it was like, oh, you know, even like our minds were, what if I fall? What, you know, what if I wobble? Um, Our bodies knew what to do. Mm. And then we say that in dancing, don't mark, you know, like don't mark your number, be full out. Yeah. that goes for anything because I saw a video of Mariah Carey on SNL years ago mm-hmm. and it was a rehearsal and you wouldn't have known vocally. Yeah. She went, nope, there might've been three people in the room and she gave exactly a Grammy award winning performance because that's what the greats do is you do it every time because you, but you have to do it every time and that's what i tell my kids that i coach i was like listen you can spend all your days in the gym all your time if you don't train the way you want to compete yep. you're gonna go out there in competition and you might be doing great one competition but 90 percent of the time you're gonna do exactly how you train what do you train that's how you're gonna compete so it's really important to compete to to train the correct way, not just, oh, I spent four hours in the gym, but what did you do those four hours? How, how many percentage of that four hours that you train the correct way or you just goof mm. around in the gym or it doesn't matter, you know? So I think that was important and it shows us, it showed me as a gymnast that it was important how we train because we showed up in competition. Well, it showed and. In- you know, me, Justin Ryrick, a lot of us, you brought us a lot of joy with your gymnastics. I mean, I remember being, you know, back then you couldn't record. So mm-hmm. I had to get up at 2 a.m. or something to watch you all in Seoul. And um, 
Yes, I like the flipping, but you know, that's why I brought you on here is because mm-hmm. of the, 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 I know they say artistry, but you're dancing. I mean, yes. you, you are, um, you dance, you know, you knew how to dance beautifully. And like I said, those, that footage is complete art. So you teach coaching. Who are you teaching or coaching? Who are you coaching? Well, I coach at a small gym and I've been coaching there for 12 years. I don't do a lot of coaching. I like to spend time with my family at home, but I do go in three days a week and coach lower level. And I think that's why I love that. I love coaching those kids Mm. that they're just learning. Yeah. And I think it's important to have good coaches at the base, you know, like when they're starting to do gymnastics, because that's so important. Are Um, they taking ballet? No. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not about to teach that. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll send you a ballet teacher. I only said that because you said when they're young, got to put them in ballet. Yeah. But... You know, like not, and that's the difference, not in Romania, when you started gymnastics, you started to be the best to go all the way to the Olympics. And, um, what I love about this country, you have every opportunity to do anything. You know, you want to do gymnastics just one, one hour a week and just enjoy and do other sports and then you have that choice. You have that chance to do it. You want to do 20 hours a week. You want to train for the Olympics. You have choices here. Um, Mm. We didn't. In Romania, there's no recreation gymnastics. I think it's starting to be a little bit now. And you see gyms that they offer just for kids to come and exercise. But during my time, you started gymnastics because you want to be the best in the world and you want to compete in the Olympics. And that's how we started training. You Do you feel you, you brought up, with, you started as a six year old with about 15, 20 hours a week. Wow. At six. So that would be well, kind of thinking yes. like an advanced schedule. Yes. That would be four hours a day. Yes. Or four days a week at six. Four. Yes, we did two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. No we wonder practiced. why you were good at gymnastics. You know, but that's how you start over there because the groups, you know, you start with like 30 kids and the next year, those four kids that didn't make it to nationals or didn't progress enough, they're pushed away. They don't do gymnastics anymore. And then that's how it is. And that's why I said that I like it here that every kid has a chance to do a sport. It doesn't have to be an elite sport, like to go to, for that elite or high level, you can just enjoy gymnastics. Or any Is, um, well, your daughter does do gymnastics, Ava, and she's going to start <laughs> competing in college, correct? Yes. How is that? Are you a gym mom? Um, <laughs> I was the crazy gym mom coach for like a <laughs> few months and then I gave that up. So now I'm just, uh, I don't remember the last time I saw my daughter in gymnastics, like train. I went to the competition. I don't like to watch. You don't. So when I watch, I watch like this. <laughs> and when I have to record, I record with my eyes closed. And I kind of know her routines. So I figure out when. It's over and then I'm done. Yeah, because in gymnastics, you can hear falls if you close your eyes. Oh, yes. I, I, I hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> like, okay. Then I know she's, you know, how she's doing. But I never, I don't know. I'm just too nervous. I'm more yeah. nervous now than when I was a gymnast. So uh, I have to learn to enjoy watching her compete. And, and I then, don't like, I, I love to, but I'm just too nervous to enjoy it. And, um, so she's going to be, is it the NCAA program? Uh, yeah, she's going to Towson university in Maryland. So. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Well, we're excited. We're nervous with we, everything. And I mean, we, not just her. So. All of you. Yeah. All of us. You'll, you'll get used to it. Cause. I did go once with um to see Melissa Marlowe's daughter. Yeah, me see. Uh-huh. In um out here against UCLA and it's fun. I mean it's 
USA gymnastics is fun, elite level, but NCAA no, there was a different is, environment. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And it's it's more of a show and it should be like that because by by this age, you know, you have gymnasts, especially college, they're competing every weekend. You know, at every weekend a competition for 13, 14 weeks in a row, you can't do a lead gymnastic like that, you know. So that's why you know, I see people commenting that oh, they should do more than two uh, tumbling passes. And I'm like, no, they, that's a lead gymnastic. That's something different. Yeah. This is college gymnastic. It should be fun. It should be, yes, you don't want to do just a layout, but... Uh, you can compare college gymnastics to elite gymnastics. It's a different story. So, well, and you, you know, you brought it up growing up in a communist country, um, how things are different and there wasn't a lot of choice. Do you feel that that's maybe why you didn't know you were, what you were doing was amazing because they kind of shielded you of this is just what you do and this is what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, you're right. Um, we, we lived a very sheltered life. We, because it was a communist country and that time we weren't allowed to talk to anybody. We went to a competition, we stayed together. We had security people around us that traveled with us and made sure that we were mm. not stolen. Um, but that's how we travel and we weren't allowed to talk. We weren't allowed to do interviews. We weren't allowed to do. So basically it took me a while when I moved to U.S. and I was very surprised that people knew my gymnastics. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I was like, what? I'm not a <laughs> gymnast anymore. Why you want to talk to me? Like to me, it was like it was done and I learned here to be proud of my gymnastics. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that I wasn't proud, you know? It was just like... Maybe to celebrate it. Job. Celebrate. Yeah, you know, it was like, this is something that I'm doing. I sign up for it. I'm doing it. And nothing spectacular. Yes, I won, but this is what... It's my job. You know, kind of like that's how I felt. And then when, when I moved here over the years, I was like... Oh wow! People loved my gymnastics, and yeah. they, they know my gymnastics, and I never knew that. So we fight, we fight, we get fights over your gymnastics sometimes, Daniela. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say that? You know she was robbed. You know we. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know we definitely, and that must feel good because you know you inspired my dancing. You know even. Because I don't have back to the legs and feet. You know, actually <laughs> comments on your legs and feet is uh, Christy Phillips. She always says you have beautiful feet. She um, had, and it's, it's fun because when I look at her and I was like, wow, that flexibility. When I look at Kim Smeskel, I'm like, she has power. You know, like I think as a gymnast, we always look at the other gymnast. And yeah just are mesmerized and wow, look what you, you had that power, you had flexibility, you had this. And, um, you know, when people are saying, Oh, you were a powerful gymnast in my mind, I was like, no, I wasn't. I, I think I was a technical gymnast. I learned everything, yes. uh, very technical gymnast. And that helped me because with my skinny legs, I don't know how I did all the stuff, but I think I had that technique that was great and that helped me uh do all the skills that i did yeah, you know and well last question about tricks techniques tricks. who came up with the syllabus mount on beam yeah uh i think we're just playing around in the gym even though we trained 40 hours a week uh when he got a chance to just be in the gym and play around and you know, just not worry about routines and skills. And the coach saw you and was like, oh, that's good. Keep it in. Uh, and, and that's and that's basically, and together with the coach, we're like trying to come up with like weird things. And that's how I ended up uh, doing that. And it's like, oh, I like it. Let's put it in the routine. So. Yeah. And that's been and again, done. We never thought that it was something. I don't remember 
at that time being like, uh, we need to, we have a skill that we wanted to make sure that it's yeah. going to be in the code of points. I didn't even know, you know, it wasn't like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I'm like, I, okay. And I only brought, bring it up because, you know, people did it a lot in the nineties, but people still do it. People still do the syllabus. Um, I do like that one. I think you did it in 89 and you let go of it for yes. some reason. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're taking it to the next level. <laughs> yes. I'm, uh, you know. So this <laughs> podcast comes out after the Olympic. Well, in the right, I think the Olympics have started, but the team will be announced. Ah. Do you, do you want to make any, um, psychic visions of who's going to be on the team no because i don't watch tv i don't watch gymnastic on tv i don't keep up with gymnastics unless i'm going to a competition then i enjoy watching the competition i know we went through trials before and nationals yes and it was fun it was fun being in the gym. I went to world championships last last world championships for two weeks. And it was fun being in the gym and watching. But believe me, at the beginning, I was like, uh, who's that gymnast? I've never heard of it. I Not because yeah. they're not good, but because I don't follow gymnastics, elite gymnastics. So if you ask me who's going to trials, and I know Simone Biles, but... So you're putting and, your money. That's, a, that's an easy bet. And who else I know? And Sky Blakely. And I know Sky because she's doing my mount on beam. She's doing a silly bash. And I saw it last year and I was like, yes, I saw it at World Championships. I was like, yes, I love this. But the rest, I don't, I don't know. I don't keep up with who's going to be what the if I team. Give you, but, I'm going to give, I'm going to, I'm going to name the team and you let me know if okay. you agree or not. So you might be like, I don't even know who that is. So I think it's going to be, maybe I'll get some money out of this because I'm saying this before it's announced. Okay. Simone Biles. Okay. Jade Carey. Okay. Suni Lee. Okay. Sky, ba- Sky Blakely. Um, the reserve is Jordan and Kayla. Who am I missing? Shalice oh, Chinese Jones. Jones. Yeah, those five. Those five. So... Jones, Biles, Carey, Lee, and Blakely in the reserve. Ah, oh, yeah. The it reserve. Might be a good team. Yeah. It is a good team, but I feel like everybody who's going to be on that team is just a strong team. So, um, what do you feel they're going through right now? I mean, I know your experience was different, but as a as a young woman, girl. Get it, gearing up for the Olympic trials, not knowing if you're making the team. I never thought of that. That's the thing. We didn't <laughs> even know that you have to qualify for the Olympics as a team. You didn't have trials though, right? We had nationals. And I think we didn't have, no, we didn't have Olympic trials. We didn't have, we had nationals and we had competition in the gym. But I guess I was just like, very naive. I was just like there as a, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a gymnast. I go to the Olympics, but we never knew that you, when you go to world championships, you actually, the top 12 teams qualified to the Olympics. We, I didn't know that. I thought everybody goes to the Olympics. So uh, what was your favorite floor, um, routine? 87. 87. Yeah. Amazing. That's yeah, a good one. That was, uh, it's a good one now. It is good. Yeah. I do like your performance. Now I feel like I'm kind of geeking out sound like a stalker because i feel like Daniela didn't know <laughs> i knew all this <laughs> i like the 89 europeans floor 89 europeans is the olympic floor with the little changes you i mean you, the dancing was great you were yeah i was I more like i was the nailed everything then. You know, like there was no, you were already doing the correct landings back then. You weren't. I know. No, no steps. I was like, I was ahead of my time in gymnastics. So now we're at the um, end of our meet and we are going to, I'm just going to ask like, just some, I'm not going to ask you dancer questions. These, I'm a, I've changed them for gymnastics. For gymnastics? Okay. There's one dance question. So. Oh my. Um, I feel like you already answered this question, but favorite gymnast. 
Who? I don't have one. You said my Nadia. Is Nadia is my idol. Yeah. So okay. I, that yeah. would be your favorite gymnast. Okay. Yeah. No, favorite I'm it? my favorite gymnast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There you go. There's the Olympic champion. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next. Favorite event? Beam. Love that. I would I like to say when kids ask me favorite event, I said not vault. So <laughs> that's, my, that's my answer all the time. Well, now I'm, I'm afraid of vault because of what you told me about it. Just in general, you're like, John. We run full force at this thing that's just stick standing there. It's there. And and so I was like, oh yeah, I guess that is pretty scary. It is. <laughs> um, well, I feel like I'm. I'm going to leave that one out. What's your favorite? You actually said you answered favorite these already. Food. You can say favorite food. Ooh, okay. Favorite Romanian cake. It's called Amandina. And it's a lot of, it's, it's chocolate and it's like chocolate and <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh, now I want chocolate. I no, I want the, chocolate. My physical is not going to like that. Um, if you could compete a solo at a dance competition, what would it be? Would you do lyrical? Would you do jazz? Would you do ballet? Oh, uh, I would like to be a ballerina. I can see that. Yes. No, if I wasn't a gymnast to be like a dancer, like something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be a ballet number. Yes. I like that. A ballet number. Yes. What's one of the boldest things you have done in your life? Gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> get, get in front of that vault and run and jump over. Vaulting. Vaulting is the vaulting boldest thing is she's the done. I'm, I, have, I live a very boring life. I don't do stuff. Well, you moved You moved here. That's pretty bold. Yeah, that's you moved at a young like age. not knowing anybody and not knowing English. So that's it. You're right. Well, Just... thank you for being on the podcast. Um, everyone, go Google. Go, go YouTube. Google. You're going to see stuff already. Sky Blakely's doing her mount. Um, and Simone Biles is doing her double double. On the third pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the floor is different. It is. It's, it's, it's a trampoline now. Yeah. No, and I just learned a- that because recently, like Christy Phillips was saying that the floor was different. Oh, and- it's d- way different. I'm like, you know, the uh, vault runway. That's different. Too? It used to be, it used to be our floor. Kind of like that hot, you know, that yeah, hot. It was, like a, it, it was a man. It was a man. Yeah. So it's different, but they're doing amazing things. And I'm excited to hear about the Olympics. I don't know if I'm going to watch it. <sighs> Everyone cover your Everyone. ears. Yes, she is. She's going to a little bit, a little bit. She'll at least watch Kai Blakely. I know. Yes. (laughs) Well, thanks for doing this podcast. No, thank you. Thank you, John, for inviting me. And I really love talking to you. And we'll talk. We'll talk more. (laughs) Thank you for the medal, too. You're welcome. Thank you so much for listening to Dance Dad with John Carella. Thank you to everyone at Hivecast for all that you do. And if this episode meant something to you, please share it and subscribe. Also, you can follow Dance Dad with John Carell on all platforms. But most importantly, remember to be bold and be fierce.